Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of The Gasket's Head. I hope you'll like my Oscar worthy performance, uh, but if you couldn't tell, the boot won't open. Well, it won't open from the switch. So it's quite a common problem of Fords of this age, Mondeo, Fiesta, Galaxies, the Focus, etc, etc. Um, and what the problem is, when you unlock the car, so all the doors open, no problem. But you come round to the boot, go to press the release switch, nothing. However, if you unlock it on the key, it opens. So we're pretty sure it's the switch. However, I am going to show you a few ways to test it just to make sure, because there's no use in wasting money on parts that you don't need. So let's have a look at getting this off and let's see why it fails. Right, just before we take this off, I thought I'd quickly explain my process through this. Now, with these and sort of any electrical fault, you should really start from the fuse all the way back. Now on this vehicle, if you check the wiring diagrams, uh, basically two fuses control the left and the right hand side door locks and the tailgate runs off the driver's side. We know all the doors work, we know the tailgate opens, so I'm happy that there's no fuse issue because none of the right hand doors would open or it wouldn't open off the key if that was the case. Um, the next problem is as well, if it was, for example, not opening at all, whether it be on the switch or whether it be on the key, then you would have to go back to the fuse box, check the fuse. And as I'll show you later, there's another way of checking it with four scan. Um, before you've even ripped off the panel to check it. Now obviously it's quite tricky if it won't open unfortunately you will have to somehow find a way of getting into the boot or getting into the wiring loom to make this open um, because it will be tricky getting this panel off otherwise if the, the boot's closed. Enough of me talking though. To get this off it's really simple it's just uh, two T25 Torx bits in the handles so we'll whiz them out. And we'll drop them. And it's literally a case of let's just pull this down. And they're only on little spring clips. And that is as easy as that, the panel's off get that out of the way and I'll show you more close up what's going on behind that panel right guys this is the uh, tailgate sort of lock itself then from that we've got the short wiring loom which just runs down to a join with some of the other bits of loom then this little white connector here this one this little thin wire that runs through the back in there and look not sure I can quite get you in there, but that runs uh, through a little grommet out into the handle and then into the switch itself. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is get the handle off. All it is is four little uh, 10 mil nuts, just straight across it. There's two in the middle. They're a bit of a they're a bit fiddly to get to, but they're not too bad. A little uh, flex head ratchet or a, a little spanner will do you. So I'm not going to bore you taking them off, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this handle off now. And then we'll show you with it all off the vehicle and see what's going on with this. Okay, so I apologise. I had a bit of trouble with um, my Forescan um, program, which is you can either get a free version, uh, but you still do need the interface cable, the ELM327 cable. However, I use the paid up version, though I think I've got an issue with the cable at the minute. So uh, what I've had to do is resort to a little bit more of an expensive uh, way of doing it. And I'm, I appreciate that you guys you know this is probably way out of the budget of most people but you know i've got this and it shows you pretty much exactly the same things that i will be able to show you in the live data on forescan so what we're looking at really is the lift gate release input switch one and two so as you can see the closed and what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to open it by the switch so if it was working normally you would expect it to show open as I press it and then obviously close once I take my finger off it. 
So I'm just going to go and give it a, a few goes. One, two, three. And I would imagine that they remain closed. Now, just to show you how this live data works, if we watch it, I'm just going to operate it from the key. You can see how that opened there, just at that split second as it opened. So, you know, we know we've got signal going down there. I will repeat this once we've fitted the new switch anyway. But it's just to show you, and this can be done on Forescan as well, which is a much, much cheaper alternative. But unfortunately tonight, it wasn't playing ball. So let's go and get this uh, switch off, and let's have a look at it. Right, I've undone the uh, four nuts. So all we need to do now is just... Uh, detach the number plate bulb uh, connectors just like that uh, and sorry as well the little white clip that i showed you earlier i've just unclipped that on the inside and just tucked it up around the back so it doesn't get caught on you know any of the sharp edges on the inner panels so all we're going to do we just with a little pick or a little flattered screwdriver whatever you've got i'm just going to pull this grommet through uh, carefully just pull that through and we'll get that on the bench and we'll have a look at this switch okay we're just going to pop the switch out of here now quite simple there's two little tabs or little layers just one on either side just literally pop them in and sort of press it down been on here a long time so it might be a bit uh, gummed up with crap in there we'll get the other side popped out there we go and that's through so let's compare this against the new one now and let's see what's happening Okay, I'm just going to quickly show you uh, these two. This is the brand new genuine Ford one. I'll pop the uh, part number in the description below. And this is the old one. Now, it doesn't actually look too bad inside this one, but if we just throw that away. There you go. You can see the moisture. I imagine that internally this little switch is uh, probably corroded in there or whatever, so that's why it's not working anymore. I'm not going to bore you with any more sort of lab type test for this. Um, I'm going to trust that this new genuine Ford one's going to work. Just a quick note as well, the part number that I put up is just for the switch on its own. Um, Ford do sell one with that wire that was connected to it. So I'm just going to test the wire though, just to make sure it's not the wire. Um, although you can buy them together, but believe it or not, it's about twice the price just to have this little wire. So unless you absolutely desperately need that wire just buy it on its own on the part number that I'm going to put in the uh, description for you so quickly we're just going to check make sure that this wire is all right uh, it's only two little wires we've got a black one and we've got what appears to be a black and yellow one so first things first we're going to check the black and yellow one just make sure that we've got uh, a good circuit there Let me make sure I get the right one Don't want to jam this in too much. Perfect. Because obviously it's quite big, the uh, the tip on that, and it will pry it apart, and then you will damage the little connector in there. Uh, and next one, just the black one, which is this one. There we go. We've got a circuit, so yeah, we're happy that's working, and we'll just reuse that. No need to buy a new one. So let's get this put back on the car. And let's get this job finished. Almost forgot to put the new switch in. Once you've hooked the wire back on, it can only go on one way. Just literally hook it in. As you can see, it's got two little ears on the side. You can see the grooves either side of the housing. And just literally pop it in. That is it, ready to go on. Okay, I've popped the wire back through now and just connected it uh, back into the connector on the inside of the tailgate. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Just thread it through pop the uh, the grommet in uh, the next thing to do is to just pop the connector back on the number plate lamps a bit flimsy these things so just be careful not to bend the uh, tabs on the lamps themselves because these ones are getting on a bit and probably need changing soon so there we go Right, next up, you've got the four bolts and you've also got the 
two little tabs. So what you might find here is, just try and line it up as best as you can, and you might find that the little connectors, the number plate lamps, just pop down. So you just need to pull them up with a bit of a pick or something, whatever you've got. And then as soon as it goes in, just hold it there. We'll lift this up and we'll get it bolted back up from the inside. Right, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to nip up the screws on the handle. You don't need to overdo it, they aren't. They don't need to be on that tight. we've got a, a decent flex head span, uh, ratchet like this rather. There we go, nipped up. And we'll get the uh, trim panel on. So, easiest way to do this is just pop it from behind the wiper motor. Just hold it up, get it lined up as best as you can. There we go, we've just got to knock those clips in and then lastly we're just going to put these uh, two Torx bits back in the handles. nice when you do it without dropping them. Right, there we go. I'm going to get this down and see if this switch works. Right guys, that's that back on. Um, now some of you might be saying, why didn't you why didn't you test it before you put the panel back on? Uh, well I did. Contrary to popular belief, I'm not that stupid. Uh, I did check it before I put the panel back on. Uh, but just to show you, it does work. I did also clean up as well behind it to appease some of you with that. So I'm just going to show you the live data anyway and uh, you can see how it would operate within live data whether you're using Forescan or you know whatever diagnostic device you've got and um, yeah it's glad to have it working again so let me show you some footage of that. Right guys uh, just going to quickly show you this uh, live data and then wrap this up. So as before it just showed everything enclosed the switch was inoperative now we know it's working uh, maybe one or two of those values should open up uh, which you'll see so i'm going to go and open it a couple of times now you wouldn't have seen that but hopefully you have so if this video has helped you then you know remember to like the video comment subscribe if you didn't thumbs down and thanks for watching. Little spider. <laughs>